rugged Andes are well known for their gorgeous vistas, but I was happy that our United States Tour Operators Association member Travcoa took us deeper and introduced us to the people that have been calling these mountains home for thousands of years. I'm here in Peru, up in the highlands just outside of Cusco, and I'm at a women's cooperative learning from the Quechua Indians some of their ancient traditions firsthand. So right now I'm learning how to weave like these very talented women and it is way harder than I expected. And now I'm going, this is not easy. This is very important for women. They can do, you know, when they're walking, sitting, talking, laughing, and the meetings, this part in their life. You know, they learn with their mothers, with their grandmothers, with their aunts, you know, like part of their family. Modern day Peru has been shaped so much by its history, and art has played a huge role in that because it's how history has been communicated, particularly through textiles. The Inca didn't even have writing, and they used textiles to tell their stories. These women were proud of their ancient craft, and they let me be a part of it, even taking a little bit home with me. We are standing in the Temple of the Sun, which was the most important religious center in all of the Inca Empire, which at the time was most of South America. When the Spanish came and took over, they put their Dominican church right on top of this temple, building right on top of the Inca walls. And they covered all the Inca walls with murals and plaster to hide them. And it wasn't until really recent, in 1950, when there was an earthquake which crumbled all the Spanish walls, and then we could see the expert craftsmanship of these Inca walls. And now you can still see them. They've withstood thousands of years. These are the Marai circles, which are basically the Inca version of the university. They use each of these levels, each circle, as like a laboratory to test out different seeds and plants and learn the different microclimates because each level was a different temperature and a different elevation. The whole purpose was to improve their agriculture, to learn how to better use the land and produce more crops and food for their people. I think that this is a great stop because not only do you learn more about the Inca culture, you have these tremendous mountain views all around you, panoramic views, Plus, they serve up a very hearty lunch right overlooking the circles. The Mara salt ponds are a unique look into how pre-Incan civilizations gathered salt. They terraced the hillside to channel the natural salt water springs into pools. And from here, they could evaporate the water and then harvest the salt. And now we're gonna catch a train to Machu Picchu. It takes a train and a bus or some very sturdy hiking legs to get to the peak of Machu Picchu, but the journey there is half the fun. And trust me, once you are up there, you will feel like you are in a different world. So we took the first bus up here, and we're here really early in the morning, so it's still kind of covered in fog, but it looks very mystical and cool. And we're hoping that if the sun god helps us out, it's gonna clear up later, and we're gonna get a beautiful sleeping view. <laughs> we are in Machu Picchu, the sacred city of the Incas the most important uh, remain of the Inca civilization that uh, was not known by the Spaniards. So you can see just a point to show how advanced they were, how important was the concept of harmony and beauty. There's so much to see here. There's so many rooms, there's temples. You could get lost here for hours. It's easy to see why this is one of the seven modern wonders of the world. And we're up here at the guardhouse at the tallest point of Machu Picchu and this is the view we've all been waiting for and it's even better than I imagined. Machu Picchu is definitely one of these places that lives up to the hype. Make sure you see it for yourself to really understand what I mean. So we're going to have a spiritual cleansing ceremony here with the Quechua shaman. He's going to speak in his native tongue, he's going to do all sorts of purifying rituals, all having to do with harmony and balance and channeling Mother Earth. The Bellman Sanctuary Lodge offers a truly local experience, which is why Travcoa's guests often choose to stay there. Our shaman cleansed me of spirits in the same way his ancestors have for centuries. The shaman is an important part of the Quechua culture, and experiencing a cleansing ritual let me integrate myself into their culture in a meaningful way.